Okay. Go ahead. All right, what up, though, y'all? This is Ami with the Real Visual Outlet, and as always, beside me, so so. And today we have a guest with us. Twan Knox. You already know what it is. Load the game. Twan Knox. Tell us how you got your name, Twan Knox. What's Twan? Man, it started off with me, my brothers in college. Because I used to be called Twan. Mm -hmm. I ain't gonna say what it is, but it is Twan something. But that was in high school, and I ain't really rock with it like that for real. Mm -hmm. So, we were just like, always like shooting dice or whatever. And I used to always keep like tens, ones, fives. They're like, damn, you always keep a Knox nice, on you. Knox. Nice. They just kept saying Knox, nice, Knox. Nice. And we'd be shooting up in the dorm rooms at Jackson College or whatever. Mm -hmm. So then I just ran with it like. Twan Yeah, so I'm trying to, in the process of removing that twine, it's on my, it's some twine blink on my chest right now. So I gotta get that removed. All right. So you guys in college, how was that? What, what did you major in? Business. Business. Yeah, me, my homeboy Jay, uh, DJ, mm -hmm. Maine, Calvin, and uh, that was really it. Did you finish? All right, did you finish? Dang, y'all all over my head. No, I ain't even finished. I ain't gonna lie to you. But well, we interviewing you. You gotta be prepared for this stuff. No, I ain't finished. Mm -hmm. I end up having a daughter. Okay. Mm -hmm. Little baby Katie. Two years old. We've seen that on YouTube, you know? Yeah, that's my baby. She your proud and joy? Man, yeah, everything. That's everything. Why, that's why I cry. Everything. You gotta start crying, don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, no, that's my, that's my baby, though, man. At first, I wasn't even rocking with that joint, man, because I was just like, I was in the hoop. I want to do so much stuff, and you know, everybody feel like, I be feeling like from the people that I see have kids, mm -hmm. everything just, life went but down, they need handouts every other week, I'm like, damn, what I'm about to do, you know what I'm saying, like, it's hitting me now, so I was like. It's not hitting you, we see you doing a YouTube channel. You no, 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 when I was in school, when that's how I was feeling at first, because I wasn't even accepting it now, but like, every day I see her, she get bigger and bigger, it's like, dang, like, she gonna look up to me to do stuff for her, like, I gotta mm -hmm. go back. So yeah, I'm straight with her now, though. Sharing with her now, that's your bitch. So, uh, tell us about how you got into rapping. Uh, music, I ain't gonna lie to you. It was, it's probably started when I was like around eight or nine. Mm -hmm. My cousin, shout out to Tay Boogie, he rapped mm -hmm. too, that's his name, but my cousin Tay. Mm -hmm. He was always rapping, coming to my dad's crib. We, my dad would pick him up, he'd be spinning out of my crib. He'd always just be writing, 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 writing. And for a minute, I thought he was on some, like, on some other joint. Like, Bro, you be having a diary, be right? He like, no, nah, all these rats, cause these rats. I'm like, oh, all right, let me see. And he was just be flooring, but you know it probably wasn't that hard when we was kids. He probably was talking about, I got the newest car, it's trying to say some bullshit, but it was sweet to me. So he, uh, he was just always writing. He was like, bro, just start writing with me. And then we just always just rap, 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 rap. And then we used to be playing crazy, you know, little flip phone with jump. Mm -hmm. We used to be using a little little voice memo thing. It used to be sounding so <laughs> trash, but we used to be doing it like that. We used to set it up like on the uh, like on the edge of the uh, ledge, mm -hmm. and we used to take the phone down, and then we used to go up to it. Like we used to the studio, and, mm -hmm. and that's how that's how I kind of started up. And then like it just kept moving like that. But then you know how everybody had that moment in their life where they be like, "Man, I, I like it. I did it," but you you don't really see you know avenue with it for real. Like you don't mm -hmm. know business part about it, so it just be a play around thing. But once you start learning the business, understand you can make money, you're like, shit, this is something I feel like I can really do. So that's how I started getting, like, like last year I was in series with, like I said, when I was with a little group when I was in college. Mm -hmm. But I decided to take a little solo route. Because, you know, in the group thing, everybody be on their own different pages. And it's hard to keep everybody with the same drive. Right. Some people will be, man, I really want to do this. And you some people like, I want to do this, man, but I got other stuff I really want to do. do. So yeah. it's like, I'm taking it more serious than you. It ain't going to work. Cause I want to wake up two in the morning to go to the studio. You would be, man, I don't, like, I don't need all that. So I was just like, man, y'all, everybody's still my gang. Y'all still my bros. It's just I had to take that step and be like, you got to go solo. Mm -hmm. That way you ain't got to worry about if you trying to get the studio, he ain't trying to go. And y'all just worked on the song together. Now y'all can't even get the studio together because it's like, what I'm about to do now? I worked on five songs with you on it. Mm -hmm. But you ain't even trying to get the studio with me. So it's like, that's where a lot of stuff kept happening. So I was just like, I got to do that alone. Yeah, so you definitely putting in that legwork, you know, you got a single out, believe me. Yeah, and I think that's kind of what you just, you know, it stem from, you know, you having to branch out on your own as a solo artist yeah. and, you know, really be independent. Yeah. So is that what inspired that Believe Me track? Can you I elaborate mean, the, a little more on that? The Believe Me came, really came from, like, 
you know your, your you know your at your mom and dad get older, they just know about the old school stuff, but then they just think from what they hear and see, like, oh the young music just act this, they all fighting, killing each other. So it was like my mom, she was cool to like shoot whatever you want to do, cause you always just been a, a grinding. Like you said, my son, I always know that you grind. You, anything you do, you, you get it done, you do it, whatever. So she was just like, if you want to do it, do it. And my pops, he's like, man, you know people be beefing and all this. You got to watch out for that. He bringing up black and stuff, all that other stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, no, nah, I mean, that's what come with it. Like, if you're a dope boy, you know, jail, dead. That's what come with it. So you, you just pay yourself whatever it come with. So I just said, I'm going to do it. So I'm just like, this for people who like, when you started rapping, you know how people get to hate when you when mm -hmm. you When you started doing this, they probably be on y'all. When y'all started doing videos, like, <laughs> like I keep hating that we bump in the city, y'all gonna be the same one. Girl, I know this one person that y'all interview, like, no, nah, you were just on my head, like, why I'm doing interviews? Like, I'm, I'm straight, we got people. But that's how I kind of just like, just not proving to nobody, but just like proving to myself and mm -hmm. proving to my, really my family, like, this was gonna work. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, how has like the, the solo um, route? been going for you thus far? Oh man, I feel like, like I said, I ain't even, I, I'm in grinding, but I just be like, you know what I'm saying, when you got a little family problems and stuff like that, you can't really focus on it too much, but a lot of that stuff gets taken care of now, but now this year, I'm really about to, I'm about to turn up for sure. Mm -hmm. All gas, no brakes. All gas, no brakes. I don't even know if my car had brakes. <laughs> <laughs> when the gig out, I don't even know if brakes. <laughs> so do you have any upcoming projects, you know? Oh, I got this, uh, Single, uh, I wanted to call it priorities, but I switched it up and I call it uh, make it make sense. Make it make sense. <laughs> make it make sense. Like that wouldn't be hard. Make it make sense. I don't know. So tell us about that. What, what inspired you to make make it make sense? Make it make sense, man. Like it just for all them, 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 them purpling, like just dudes who just be like we can say niggas somewhere. Mm -hmm. Say whatever you feel. Oh yeah, it's like <laughs> niggas be like they be perfect, bro, and it's like. And it be dudes, I heard like, like, like y'all girls really got it hard. Like I've been paying attention to girls and raising kids by themselves, but I never had a kid, so I ain't never really had no girl. I love them, but it's like dudes be around this bitch trying to flex. They ain't hit every girl in the city, but like the whole time they got like four kids, they don't even do shit four, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So with me, it's just like, it's just really kind of like snapping on every, every aspect, like a, a nigga trying to flex and don't do shit for his kids. A nigga ain't got his priorities right, doing some bullshit. A female who just want to get bundles and, and be the hype of the party all the time and be seen. But your kids come to the crib, they sleeping on the floor. They know it's not it. You get the refund money. You blew it all on Chanel shoes trying to keep up with the trends. Like it just, it just covering all that like type shit. Like people just who ain't, who ain't right to like make it make sense. Like mm -hmm. you got this, but this looking like that, make it make sense. Like mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like y'all gonna like. You got your head on. Sound like yeah. you know what I'm saying? I tell you, y'all gonna, you know, gonna be calling me next week. Like, what's up? Then two months from now, y'all be like, dang, this thing go crazy. Can we get that interview? <laughs> <laughs> do you think, yo, do you think having your daughter change your outlook on things, or have you kind of always been that way? No, I always had the ground, but, like, far just, like... Responsibility and all yeah, that. Yeah, and a girl, and, like, like, as far as, like, how I treat females, like, because, like I said, I don't, I don't have a lot of females like that have been, that have held me down being real for me, but I just, I ain't gonna lie to you, I done did them both. I'm talking about like bones. What's something you done right. did? What's something you done did? Dad, y'all try to sell me. Yeah. Jay, y'all try to sell me. You don't have to say no names. names. You but just tell me right, experience and you tell them you're sorry at the end too. <laughs> right, yeah. I mean. Or you apologize. You ain't sorry. You apologize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Uh, Cause like, you know what I'm saying? When she, when she feel like, 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 you know you ain't getting up with garbage and the girls ain't getting up with be good to you. It's like, imagine like you finding your soulmate. Mm -hmm. And then like they just rock with you, do everything for you. They accept your kid, they do all this art. It's, it's just starts of our person that like you might have a kid with, they, they just do everything for you, they look out for you, but you just be on some dumb shit with them, like just treat them crazy. So it was like, a lot of people are like, oh, you looking dumb. She might be doing this or she might be doing this. Like, bro, y'all don't even know to have. Like before she even got to that or doom girls got to that, I was on. Half of them, they know, like like I said, each individual will probably know like 50% of the stories and the shit I've been doing, like, because they ain't caught me up, you know. But there's way more to it. Like, mm -hmm. with each individual of them people, they know what I'm talking about, but I just want to tell y'all, I'm sorry. I was a little trash, but 
I mean, y'all know I'll still be cool with y'all if I could, or if we is still cool, you know, we're gonna just rock from there. Now. I'm just trying to put all that in the bag. So okay. keep moving towards the future. All right. Well, tell us a little bit about your YouTube channel. I ain't gonna lie to you, man. Like, <laughs> my cousin, his name is Justin, uh, he graduated from Eastern Michigan. Mm -hmm. And he always used to tell me, but you know, kids don't understand that they're like, Man, stop buying them J's, man. Stop buying that Gucci, man. Put that, save it, save it. So this year, really working with him and messing with his accounting and stuff like that because he got a business called Blue Card in the Detroit uh, school system that I mentor kids in too. So with that, he just really be like, man, the goal is multiple source of income. It's like I always knew that, but I was going by everything the wrong way. Like I always like, shit, I'll fit this bag here. I'll go get some phones here. Shit, I'll go sell a little dog with my brother over Yeah, here. I seen you with the two iPhones. You was trying to sell them? Mm, no, I mean, we been, we been around doing that. I done slapped on PayPal, people all over my deal. And I like, I swear, I ain't, I mean, they, they, they messed with me on the ground, but I'm telling you, I was going done with the PayPal because I got this little stuff in my apartment or whatever. Man, I started doing them on the PayPal when I mean, I feel like one of my songs blew up. Like, that's how heavy my deal was going crazy. Dang, bro, share the sauce. What you doing? Mm. Put, my, put your man's on. Niggas lying to me, telling they about to go to, uh, I'm about to go to see the point, bro. My family ain't trying to do nothing for me, bro. I'm just trying to better myself. Two weeks, three months later, this nigga still in the city. Like, bro, if I would have thinking some cheese, I would have been the pride to fuck you up. Because you love keep to tell me all that story. But it just be like that. Like, man, it's like really everybody should believe this. And I want to say this to everybody. Like, man, the goal is to always have multiple sources of income. Like. Snapdog, he went to uh, my high school with me, like, you know what I'm saying? Shot dice with him, him cash pay. Like, they was like big homies. And I was like ninth grade, I think it was like 12th. But like, I ain't trying to put his business out there. But everybody kind of know like he got he got multiple kids. But one thing I respect about him, like he do for his kids. Cause he makes sure he moving. People be thinking that you got a lot of kids. Like, you know what, I can't go to school and do this and do that. Like, man, yes you can. It's just like, it's just how you want to live. Like the grind, you say you want this. God, please bless me with a job. Please give me this. But you sitting on your ass, you ain't applied for nothing. You ain't been no interviews. You ain't did none of that. So how you trying to pray for something or begging people something that you ain't even working for? Mm -hmm. So make it make sense. Like, make it make sense. <laughs> make sense, man. So how long have you been doing your YouTube channel? Because if you're trying to make it, you know, into another source of income. Man, I'm trying to DDG status. You hear me? <laughs> I, I need a G-Wagon. My baby need a baby G-Wagon. And if she get a little bigger, she going to need a four-wheel after that. She going to need a G-Wagon. I'm, yeah. I'm trying to take it to, y'all know what I'm trying to take it to, to, to that big money, to where it's 20K a month, like a rap check, mm -hmm. or even more than that. Okay. So what type of content are you trying to put out? Is it just vlogging or? Vlogging. Uh... I don't know if y'all been on my page. I uh, mm -hmm. I touched up on that uh, that big key mm -hmm. and uh, big key and uh, East Warren Buck little situation. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of cities uh, they started eating it up. I think I probably as far as that little argument, people seek it up on Instagram and stuff. But I think like as far as on YouTube with that little argument, I think I got the most views on YouTube right now with that. Mm -hmm. I think my jump like five k. Everybody was like one k, two k, something like that. Mm -hmm. But as soon as that jump dropped, I don't know why I was up, but it was like two in the morning. I got the screenshot, whipped it up. On my phone, edit it real quick, slide that way on YouTube. That's all right. Yeah. Yes. Well, I ain't gonna say what the situation about, but yeah. Twilight TV, go check it out. Absolutely. So you said that you've been kind of like, um, stole a little bit with music because you've been having like some family stuff going on. So last year. So is that when your brother passed last year? No, my brother actually passed in 2017. Okay. Like, that, that was just like a whole different situation. Like, and I remember being a kid, bro, all I think I run through my mind, like my dad just always tell us like, don't wait until your brother pass or wait until your brother go to try to show love. But I'm glad it was never no thing like that because I always chilled up on my brother, pulled up on him, whipped up on him, we always kicked it. And that's why I kind of really messed me up because that was like, all my brothers, I had three brothers, three sisters, no, four sisters, three brothers. Mm -hmm. And then with me, it make four, four boys. Mm -hmm. So out of the boys, it's like, it's Dion, my older brother, I ain't him until I was like eight years old. And our relationship was cool, but we still didn't hang around each other to really get that, that bond bond. T.Y., that's my uh, second oldest brother. We was always cool because we grew up together. But he was like growing on his own, doing his own little thing. Because I think he was like six years, seven years older than me. Then it was Tom, he did, uh, my third older brother. He was still like living with my dad and stuff as I was in high school. You know, him going in like 12th grade graduate, he was still living with us. So it was like, we was getting so many years close together. So it was like when that jump happened, it was like, Dang, like, 
that's my brother I like out of all my brothers I had the closest bond with so it was like before that happened I probably ain't cried in probably like 10, 12 years like but that jump I'm like I ain't gonna cry and then my daddy had hugged me and I just couldn't even do nothing I'm like this shit was fucked up but it was just like I said some hating ass niggas I'm, I see the dude every day like that that, uh, that killed him whatever then my big brother he was actually there to witness it so I always check up on him and see how he feel because I don't even know how that feel if I would have seen it Nightmare starts to turn into my sleep, I don't know. But yeah, that's what happened with, happened with that situation. But uh, he was always a person that always told me, like, man, rap. And he used to try to rap, I tried to push him towards it, but he was always like, nah, man, you got it. You do the rap. Bro, that's you. You got the personality. You got the swag. Do it. That's you. So I, I got to keep going with it for my bro, R.P. Tom. I got to keep going. So is that, do you think that changed your outlook, you know, on things? Because from what you said earlier, your dad was saying like, yeah, you know, you get into the rap, you know, you get into these beefs and different things like that. So do you see yourself trying to like stay out that lane or stay out of the way of like all of that confrontation? Or I mean, beef, I'm trying to tell y'all, if y'all rock with me on a personal level or outside of this, like any, the the Twan Nas and you meet at Twan, like man, I ain't know none of that. Like I'm with that though. Like if, if you want to take it there, I promise you I'll take it there. Like far as scrapping anything, I already put hands on somebody, but you know, everybody want guns and they can't nobody take no whooping. So you beat on the dude, he either got a strap close by or before you even get done with it, he trying to shoot you or it's, before you know it, two weeks go by, you forgot all about it, he catch you, now he trying to shoot at you. So mm -hmm. it was like, you gotta just play how you gotta play it and I'm prepared for all that. But for I trying to beef with somebody, I'm not into all that. Like, if you beefing with me, it's pure because either maybe I didn't hit your girl or something like that, or you never know, maybe you wouldn't see me in the club and you feel less of yourself because we up in there, I don't know. But they gotta be something that don't mean shit for real. Like, I never be on nobody deal. Nigga, you supposed to be doing this, I'm doing this, nigga, fuck. It ain't even that. But if some beef come my way, it gotta be somebody who started it first. Hmm. I don't even move like that. Okay. So we seen that you, you freestyle. I mean, sometimes, I don't really freestyle. It just be, it just be like, I don't know how to catch it. It's just like the vibe. Like, if I'm like feeling that way, I just try to get up on it. You trying to do something right now? Fuck flex. <laughs> what y'all wanna hear? I don't know if I got a real bar right now. But no, what y'all what y'all wanna hear? Whatever you got on your mind, it's a freestyle. What's up? Uh y'all ready? Alright. I say if you say you love me, you better mean it. I've been riding around the city, boy, with some demons. Freaky bitch suck me up, she turned into a demon. Baby girl don't spit, baby swallow up the semen. Made some decisions, shit, I had I had to make, but I had to go with it. God chose my fake, bitch said she wanna fuck. I told her let me be, she said not so I wanna threesome. Fuck it, let me see. I need my mama nigga see me up on MTV. I need my pops nigga see me up on BET. I need my baby nigga read me up in magazine. I'm in a trap nigga loading up some magazines. Cuss a long nigga looking like a limousine. Matter of fact, we making money uh, like a time machine. Uh, I mean, that's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was dope. It was yeah, dope. Was like, now, is that something that you uh, you wrote? No, no, no. Like I said, it's, it'd be like pieces and pieces that I, I can, I don't know how to say it. Like, I can freestyle and think of something that I wrote and mm -hmm. put it in there quick. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, that's, I don't know how people rap my mind work, but that's how my mind work. Like, people got different writing style. Some niggas need to get blown before they rap. Mm -hmm. Some niggas need to be just, and I feel like a lot of people don't even really need to get blown to get rap. I feel like a lot of people do it for the clout and just be on camera, just, Cut lean and just mm -hmm. wanna be like real talk. I can't even think for real. Like I could be off some Hennessy probably like a shot or two or maybe a little a little crud, but overall I like to try to be mellow, sober. Like I'm more creative, like just really mellow for real. Mm hmm Again, let everybody know what they can look forward to you coming up. I mean man, y'all look for more content as far as YouTube, more vlogs. Like I said, more like I said, Detroit news if you want to call it that, or world news. Uh, stay tuned to my, uh, like I said, Apple Music, Spotify, Twan Knox, like everything gonna be under Twan Knox if you want to look for me. But more videos about to drop, uh, more songs about to get dropped. Like I'm about to just press, press on the gas. Like I said, I don't got no breaks, so that's what we on. <laughs> you got any shout outs you want to give? Shoot, shout out to the Loader Game, man. B4L, my name Jalen. You know what I'm saying? My nigga, mine. Sleeves, everybody. Just shout out to everybody who know they rock with me. Alright. Alright, appreciate you coming out to the Real Visual Outlet and we look forward to seeing what you got in store. Alright. What? Oh they gang knots. Hey, if you say you love me better mean it.